In a suburban secondary modern like Westwood, teaching poetry from different cultures can be a challenge. But the English department have their own approaches to the problem. Kelly McGlynn is taking her top year 10 class through two poems in non-standard English. Bye. Ashley. We've only just started looking at the poems from different cultures, so it's still, a lot of it is just about teaching the students how to find pathways into the poems. Marina. So you need to open your book to page 12 and you need to write from unrelated incidents in your yellow notebook, please. I'd like to be focusing on poetry that was really relevant to them and like them bringing me poems that they were interested in and looking at those. But it is assessment driven and we do have to, you know, stick within those um, boundaries. Tom Leonard is from Glasgow. He's proud of his cultural background, which he exhibits most noticeably through his accent and dialect. So in your books, can you quickly drop that bit of information down for me so when we go back to revise, um, we'll have a little bit of understanding about the context of the poem. So what we're going to do is have a quick look at a video um, that basically goes out and takes the poem to the streets of Glasgow and asks everyday people out on the street to listen to the poem and then gets their ideas about what they think the poem is about. This is a six o'clock news, the man said. The reason I talk with a BBC accent is because you wouldn't want me to talk about the truth with a voice like when I you scruff. If I talked about the truth, like one of you scruff, you wouldn't think it was true. Just one of you scruff talking. Can I ask you what you think the poem's about and why the poet wrote it? The way people um, talk and like the way they're... Like, the way people take them by the way they speak. He must obviously have been fed up of hearing the English accent, so in television and maybe thought that this was his way of getting his own back and his way of saying put some Scottish accents on the TV. I'm just start speaking how I want to speak, eh? The folk they take you differently, but that's their problem, eh? We're going to break off into some groups. Each group is going to get given a sheet with some questions on it and you need to um, try to come up with some as much many ideas as you possibly can and then we'll come back at the end and we'll all share our ideas. I'm going to give you guys the tricky one. So they broke into uh, groups. I'd come up with some focus questions because if it's relevant to them they want to understand it and they want to look at it in more detail so it will make the deconstruction so much easier. In terms of their dynamic I think that they are quite a good class they listen to each other which is really important. Already you can see the students who are group leaders and other people who just like to listen or other people who are a bit too afraid to contribute so by getting an idea of that later on we can mix things up a bit and get them to start challenging those roles when they feel a little bit more comfortable within the group. The really important part of any sort of group activity is feedback because you may have come up with some really fantastic ideas in your group and now we need to share those ideas with everybody else. So, Ben or Leslie, who, whoever's reading down there, what was the question that you guys were asked to look at? What effects might speaking differently have on your life? I would feel like I'm on my own. It would affect the way people react towards me. They might sort start to ridicule me, ridicule me. You would start to feel like an outsider. Let's go to this group here, and who's going to read the question out, guys? Why might some readers think he has a grudge against BBC English speakers? Why might other readers think he is making a very practical point? We think Tom Leonard has a grudge against BBC English speakers because in his poem he calls English speakers scruff. He also makes a sound as if we speak properly all the time. With Scottish people, they might not speak correctly as well as BBC presenters because BBC presenters are brought up to speak well. OK, that's interesting. You've raised some interesting points there about what's speaking correctly and what's speaking well. Anthony, subject matter. What is this poem about? 
they might not speak like posh, like BBC people do, like with a posh accent, but they speak how they speak from where they are and all that. I think that's what it's trying to say the poem is about. Excellent. What about Purpose? Who would like to have a go at Purpose for us? What about some people that I haven't really heard from yet? The purpose of the poem, I think, is to inform, to inform the readers about his opinions and his world, basically. I agree, and I think it's also about making that issue um, an issue for everybody, not just for him. So making other people aware of, um, of that issue. Excellent. Emotion. Now, two of the groups dealt with emotion, so we should all know about this one. So, Marina. I think he's a bit annoyed. Yeah. He's annoyed because of... You just see British people on telly and BBC presenters and not too many Glasgow people. Okay, so yeah, a little bit annoyed and probably frustrated as well. Okay, now craft. Who wants to tell me some of the poetic devices that we've used here? It's not really a poetic device, but he makes <coughs> sentences really long, so you, it makes a poem skinny, so you want to look at it to see what he says. Yep, that's absolutely right, and that certainly is a poetic device, how he's chosen to set that out. And then summary is basically just what we think of it, so who wants to tell me what they think of it? I think it's kind of offending because he's saying that we um, tell him that he can't speak about, but he's doing exactly the same to us. The first time you read it, you don't get any of it, and the next time you think, oh, I understand that a bit worse, didn't before. Perfect, and I'm pretty sure that the poet would be pretty happy with that as well. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, that's really good, guys. What we'll do now is let's start to have a look at the next poem in your book, which is Half Cast. Excuse me, standing on one leg, I'm half cast. Explain yourself what you mean when you say half cast. I try to use as many different resources in the classroom as possible, uh, just, I guess, to break things up and again, to cater for those different learning styles. Um, some people, you know, are more than happy to just read the words off a page and that's the best way to get it into their heads, but other people need to see it performed for it to have that same impact. But come back tomorrow with the whole of your eye and the whole of your air, and the whole of your mind, and I will tell you the other half of my story. What did you think? He did it more like a song than a poem. Yeah. And, and I guess that's uh, when we're talking about performing poetry, that really comes across, doesn't it? That it is a real performance. Who's heard of the term half cast before? Is that thought to be, in Britain, an offensive term? Yeah, OK. We've got here the half-cast canvas and we've got the half-cast weather. Firstly, we might go through and look for words that we just don't recognise or words that we don't um, understand exactly what they mean. And then we'll go through and look for clues to what the poem's about, literally and metaphorically, and look for examples of similes, basically just highlighting things that they will be able to refer to in their analysis. What's the point that um, the poet's making there, guys? What do you think he's made? He's saying, um, was Picasso making a half-cast canvas when he was mixing the red and green? Is the weather half-cast when we've got some light and some shadow? Yes, thank you, Jay. Basically, he's saying it's not all about white and black people that are half-cast. Everything can count as half-cast as long as there's something to back it up. Okay, yeah, so almost showing how ridiculous it yeah. is. Um, and yes, please, Michelle. In a way, he's trying to prove a point that if you look at a person who's mixed race as half caste, then if you look at everything else around you, most things are like two different things together. So should they be called half caste too? We wouldn't say that the weather is half caste, and we wouldn't say that Picasso's paintings were half caste canvases. So why would we say that somebody is half caste? It's just stupid, basically. This is where it gets really interesting because the tone changes here and it becomes very sarcastic. Because he's, he's basically saying that um, if you class him as half cast, then maybe like you'll only kind of half listen to him. Yeah, exactly. You must come back tomorrow with the whole of your eye and the whole of your ear and the whole of your mind. So what is he saying there? Think about what you're saying and uh, think about it again and come back when you understand that I'm not half cast. Exactly, and I love this. 
the whole of your mind. And I will tell you the other half of my story. Okay, what I would really like to do now quickly is get started on a task. You're going to respond to that um, poem. But instead of doing it in the structured way where we write a paragraph on subject matter and a paragraph on purpose, you're going to choose how you would like to respond to this poem. And to do that, you need to think about where your strengths lie, Samson, and what you're good at. So I don't want to hear any of this, I couldn't do it, it was too hard, because you are adapting this task to suit yourself. For the homework task, normally we would do it through an essay format where they're just doing a basic um, analysis, but this time they could choose to still demonstrate that they have an understanding, but it's just how they choose to demonstrate that understanding is up to them. I drew a face with one half black and white and one half half cast to show that people that get called half cast don't really like it. But when they call, get called mixed race, then they feel more happy because like, they don't really think that you can be half cast. I drew like, just half a face, because like, in the poem he was saying that like, half cast, if you're going to call us half cast, then you must be saying that we've only got half an eye and half, half everything. You might as well give them a reply, and I, I'm good at poems, I, I enjoy writing, writing them, so that's what I thought. So I thought that'd be a better way to describe what I meant. I don't like writing, so just did a collage instead. All I did was coloured in the black lines and um, stuck pictures of just black and white on it to show that half cast is black and white to put together. Now I wrote a poem and asked my friend to draw me a picture because I'm not very good at drawing. I got like ideas from like different verses of the poem and then inside I kind of did my own reaction to it. I um, wrote a poem because I like writing and I wrote it in the same style as the um, person that wrote it. I thought if I wrote it as an essay it'd be a bit boring and you know, I didn't really have that much time, so I thought I'd write as a poem instead. I say what I see, two races in one human being. To me, it's common sense, but I see it makes you tense. Half cast, not half a person. To enjoy two cultures, it's good, I reckon. Both worlds you get to taste because of the uniqueness of your race. Well, with beauty, your race is blessed, or because two races met. I understand what you mean when you mention the sky. As half cast weather, it seems a lie. I understand what you mean when you speak of symphony. This music can't be half cast, just like you and me. I understand what you mean, so don't you insult me. I understand what you mean, and I can see it clearly with the whole of my eyes, with the whole of my mind. I think you're fine with the whole of my hand. I understand. I was surprised at some of the things that they pulled out of the poems that they actually understood. Um, they, they took things a step further than I probably would have hoped them to do. Because all of the skills that we're using are still quite new in terms of the deconstructing a text, I really want them to um, be, you know, increasing their understanding of that every time we use it. So I think that that's really important because at the end of the day when they go into the exam, that's what they're going to be asked to do, to deconstruct a text. Um, sometimes the things that they come up with were ideas that hadn't even occurred to me yet, so it, it's quite enjoyable for me as a teacher because I'm learning things as well from them. 